And turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5. Uh, last week uh, we looked at verse number 19, quench not the spirit. And then tonight uh, we're going to look at uh, despise not prophesyings. And so uh, uh, let's pick up reading in verse 18. We'll read down through verse 23 and we'll come back and look at verse number 19. Look at verse number 19. Uh, the Word of God, or excuse me, verse 20. Uh, in verse number 18, the Word of God tells us, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the Spirit, despise not prophesyings. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless into the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, let's bow our heads and ask the Lord to bless the reading of his word tonight. Now, dear Heavenly Father, we are thankful for this time that you've allowed us to assemble together to worship thee in spirit and truth. And Father, we are thankful for the blessings of today. Lord, we're thankful, dear Lord, for the health you give us to be here this evening the very breath of life you give us to enjoy thy creation. And Lord, we are thankful for your word and the truth and instruction that we receive from thy word. And Father, as we look to the bread of life tonight, I ask and pray that we would learn something to help us in our daily walk with thee. Uh, Father, that we would receive encouragement from thy word. Uh, Father, I pray that you would help me as I preach tonight. I ask and pray that you give me anointing of the Holy Ghost to preach with clarity of thought and clarity of speech. Lord, if it please thee, I'd ask that you would strengthen my voice and my lungs. Help me to be able to uh, preach the truth in love this evening, dear Lord. And Father, if there happens to be one here tonight or one that watches this video that's never trusted thee as Lord and Savior, Father, I ask and pray that you convict their heart of sin, that you draw them to yourself, and that they be saved before it's eternally too late. And Lord, we just thank you and praise you for what you've done. We thank you and praise you for what you're going to do. For it's in Christ's name we do ask and pray these things. And amen. You know, this week has kind of been an exciting week. Uh, I never have been one to, to follow astrology, if you will. There was a time in my life when I was in high school and when I was in college that I did get caught up in reading my horoscope, if you will. Uh, uh, I just started doing that, picked that up as a habit, if you will, and everything. And of course, this past week, maybe you had the opportunity to go out and see the eclipse. Uh, the last one that we had here, I guess, in the continental USA was in 2017. And so uh, I was actually able to come here to the church, go back to where the crosses were at, and had my glasses with me and was able to observe uh, the eclipse back in 2017 and uh, and we were moving last year from one house to the next I come across about three pair of those glasses and I'm like well this probably won't ever happen again in my lifetime they hit file 13 and we no longer possess those and so uh, Christy was going to be at work and Anthony asked me I want to come in if I saw the eclipse and I said look brother I said the way things have been going for me here lately I wasn't about to even take a chance to look at that damn thing. And I was actually uh, actually uh, in our bedroom, had the blinds and the curtains open, and the sun literally was coming through the window at an angle right where I was laying on the bed. And I was so nervous about that, I went and shut the blinds so the sunlight couldn't come through, take a chance to damage my eyes. Uh, when things have been going for me here of lately, if I just would have blinked at that thing, I'd probably be seeing Dr. Harmon and everything. And so, anyway, uh, a lot of people got excited about looking up at that eclipse. And certainly there's nothing wrong with that, and I know it's a rare event. But boy, I tell you what, wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be encouraging as a people of God if Christians were looking up at the sky every day looking for the return of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of her faith. Looking for the Lord to return for His bride, the church. Amen. And so uh, uh, certainly there's a lot of excitement about that. 
Uh, but we, I'd like to see more Christians get excited about looking up and looking for Jesus to come back. Amen. Amen. I was talking to somebody, <coughs> excuse me, earlier today, and uh, it was actually when I was getting my blood drawn and everything, and they said, said, I want you to know, preacher, we've been praying for you, and I covet the prayers. I appreciate the prayers. Please don't stop praying. And so, uh, anyway, uh, uh, they asked me, uh, you're going to get better. You're going to get better. And uh, what do you want me to pray for? And I said, if you want to pray for something, I said, pray for the Lord to come back. I said, wouldn't it be good if he just come back and take all of us out of this mess that we're in, in this world, and we can enter into the presence of God and enter into his joy, enter into his peace, and enter into his rest. You know, uh, uh, I know, uh, uh, beloved, uh, uh, because of my uh, cancer, uh, I no longer work. Uh, uh, I'm uh, disabled now. But if I could, if I could trade and have perfect health or good health without cancer and go back to work, I'd do it in a heartbeat and everything. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that it is what it is. Uh, but uh, uh, beloved. I just look forward to the Lord coming back and entering into his rest. Now, uh, I try to be a good a good housewife. I try to keep the dishes washed up. Uh, I don't I don't follow after Brother Derek and some of the things he's been doing. And everything I, 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 I just I ain't that brave, I'll just say it that way. But uh, anyway, uh, uh, I, uh, today I washed the sheets and uh, the pillow cases. I washed uh, the laundry. Uh, got that, dried it, put them up on a hanger and everything. Swept up around the house, got the garbage, took care of the dogs. And I try to stay busy. I try to stay industrious and everything. It's not right for Christy uh, to go work and have that burden of having to do everything when she comes in. But I was sitting there thinking, you know, as I sit down, because I have to take the breaks every now and then, <coughs> wouldn't it be nice? one day to enter to the rest of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And all of her labors and all of her sorrows, all of that will be behind us one day. I believe we certainly have something to look forward to, Amen. don't we? Amen. And so, uh, beloved, uh, uh, last week we talked about quench not the Spirit, and of course the capital S, Spirit, making reference to the Holy Spirit of God. And then uh, verse number 20, despise not prophesyings, and uh, uh, beloved, uh, when it comes to the Word of God, we should uh, yearn to meditate upon the Word of God, to read the Word of God, and study the Word of God, and not ever let the Word of God become cumbersome to us or troublesome to us. Now, right now, uh, I'm, I'm on course, if you will, uh, for my Bible reading for the year. And this year, I kind of went back uh, to how I used to do it several years ago, uh, actually over a, a couple of decades ago, I started at Genesis, and I'm just reading it right straight through as it is in the King James Bible. And so right now, you know, I'm in First and Second Kings at this time, and some of those names are hard to pronounce. And such and such was king in Israel for so many years and was seven years old. In the next verse, such and such was 10 years old and reigned so many years in Judah, you know, and was such and such uh, a son and so forth and so on. And it can get confusing and it can get challenging. But beloved, every word of God is pure. Every word of God is necessary. And uh, uh, beloved, don't let uh, uh, the pronunciation of the names, don't let the difficulty in trying to follow the analogies and so forth and so on discourage you. Jesus said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Just read the word of God. Pray before you open up your Bible. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, and God will open up your eyes. He will give you truth as you go through and read the scriptures. Amen. You may not get it that exact time that you read it, but as you hear somebody preach it, as you listen to it on the radio, or you'll go back over and read it two or three times later, the light bulb will go off, and God will give you a nugget. He'll give you a truth. Have you ever read the Word of God 
and all of a sudden you read it and the light bulb went off. That's what he meant. That's the truth to be had here. And I've read that verse 10, 15, 20 times. And on the 21st time, the Lord spoke to my heart. And that's how you grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so, beloved, you know, Jesus said, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word. And He is the living Word. Amen. Amen. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Amen. Amen. And so He is the living Word. And so, beloved, uh, uh, we certainly need to open up our hearts and our ears to the preaching and teaching of the Word of God. Uh, beloved, even if it's the Old Testament, I know it's the, the Old Testament law, the Torah, and applies mostly to the Jewish people, if you will, but there are still truths in the Old Testament that hold true today. And so, uh, beloved, uh, uh, I know some preachers, uh, This is that's between them and the Lord, but I know some of my preacher brethren that won't even preach out of the Old Testament because they feel like it's not necessary for the dispensation and day that we live in. Uh, but beloved, I preach out of the Old Testament I preach out of the New Testament. The Old Testament is a, a typology, a foreshadow of things to come. And there are still things that are written in the Old Testament that have yet to happen. And so, beloved, we need every word of God. Amen. 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 And so don't cherry pick it, if you will. We need every word. And here, uh, uh, the Apostle Paul was saying in regard to the Old Testament scriptures and the teachings of Jesus Christ, don't discard those. Those Don't despise them. But hide them in your heart. Meditate upon them. And study them. Because we need them. Amen. We need them. Yeah. And so, uh, beloved, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 through 21, the Word of God tells us, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but to, uh, to us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. And beloved, uh, uh, Dr. Lee Robertson used to say this all the time. It takes three to thrive Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. As a child of God, you need to be in the house of God. And if revival is going on, if conference is going on, you need to be in the house of the Lord. Uh, beloved, uh, you need to hear all the preaching and teaching that you can get. I'm afraid too many Christians today uh, what time they go to church, that's the only time they open up their Bible. And when they get home, their Bible either stays in their car or on the coffee table or on the nightstand until the next time they go to the service. And beloved, you need to be in God's Word each and every day. And you need to hear as much preaching as you can. <clears throat> I appreciate you being here tonight. But think about this. If you attend every service, in a seven-day calendar week, that is four hours out of a 168-hour week that you're in the house of God. And if you do the math on that, I guess that's, what, less than 2% just off the top of my head. That's not a lot. You're going to need more than that. God's already said that we're forgetful hearers. And so, beloved, that's why you need to be on a daily Bible reading plan you need to study the Word of God. You need to go to revival meetings. You need to go to missions conference and open up your ears and your heart and absorb as much of the Word of God as you can. And that comes through preaching and that comes through reading. And so, beloved, it's not foolish preaching, the foolishness of preaching. God uses a messenger, a preacher, to exalt the Word of God and beloved, that's how people are saved. That's how I got saved. That's how you got saved. 
somebody somewhere shared with you the death, burial, and resurrection message of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. They shared with you the gospel. And beloved, I just cannot emphasize how important it is to love the Word of God, meditate upon the Word of God, study the Word of God, and live according to the Word of God. It's one thing to know what it says, but bless God, we not only need to look to it, we need to live by it. Amen. You know, God tells us how our marriages should be from His Word. Tells us how our homes should be. How our businesses should be. How our walk with Him should be. And we find the issues of life in the Word of God. Amen. The answers are there. We just need to read His Word. Amen. Amen. And I'm so thankful that His Word is unchanging. Yes. Forever, O oh Lord, is Thy Word settled in heaven. You know, uh, especially during a campaign year, this political season, people change their mind all the time, do they not? They make promises and then they go back on the Word. <clears throat> I remember the Republican primary when it started, there was about 20 of them. And they all was against Donald Trump. Everyone was against Donald Trump. Well, as time went by, this one would drop out. The next one would drop out. The next one would drop out. And maybe not all of them, but a majority of them said, you know what? If Donald Trump carries the Republican nomination, I will support him. But you just said three weeks ago you couldn't stand him. And now you said you support him. Aren't you thankful that the truths from God's Word yeah. are settled and you don't have to worry about that. Amen. You can take God's word to the bank. Yes. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. But again, expose yourself to the preaching and teaching of God's word. Romans chapter 10, verses 14 through 17. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? And in verse 17, we all know this. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, I know verse 17, to rightly divide it here in this portion of Scripture, it's talking about saving faith, being born again, listening to a preacher, sharing the gospel message, coming under Holy Ghost conviction, calling upon the name of the Lord and asking Jesus to save you. So then faith cometh by what? Hearing. Need to hear the Word of God. And beloved, we can take that verse and make this application and certainly not do the Scripture any injustice whatsoever. But even after salvation, and you get saved, because we are forgetful hearers, isn't it good when you go through and you read some of the promises of God? And I forgot about this. I need to be reminded of that promise. It increases your faith. Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And so we need to hear the Word of God to get born again. And after we're born again, we need to hear the Word of God to strengthen our faith, to encourage our faith. And so, beloved, the Word of God is certainly vital to the believer, is it not? Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me, I apologize. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 10 through 12 tells us, But by the grace of God, I am what I am. I believe that's a message within itself tonight. Thank God you are who you are. I believe it, don't try to be like somebody else. I remember, I remember after I first uh, uh, got my calling to preach, and I'm like, I want to be like this preacher. I want to be like that preacher. 
And when I first started to preach, I tried to be like this preacher. I tried to speak like that preacher. And then I realized, you know what? I'm not them. I'm Chris Hazelwood. And I just need to be the best Chris Hazelwood that I can be. And I just need to preach like Chris Hazelwood is going to preach and not preach like somebody else. And beloved, when I got that settled in my heart, it gave me so much more liberty, peace, and joy because I was just being me and not trying to be somebody else. Uh, beloved, you be who you are and you thank God for who you are. Uh, beloved, uh, uh, God, uh, uh, as a child of God, God loves each and every one of us. God has a plan for us and each one of us are special in His eyes. And you just be you. Don't you try to be anybody else. You just be the best you that you can be to glorify Jesus Christ. <clears throat> but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And His grace which was bestowed on me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach, and so you believed. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? At the end of the day, be a witness, be a light, be yourself, and tell others what great things God has done for you. Amen. All of us can share that testimony. Yes. Every one of us in here has had answered prayer. I'm assuming I know about everybody in here tonight. Maybe some I know a little bit better than others. But everybody shared their testimony with me here tonight. And you're saved by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And beloved, you can take what God has done for you and know you may not know the Romans road. You may not be able to memorize scripture. But bless God, you can tell somebody else what Jesus did and is doing for you. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. And beloved, that has just as much power in it. Amen. Amen. That is a witness within itself. Yes. And so, uh, beloved, the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 15, verses 19 and 20, through mighty signs and wonders by the Spirit, the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about into Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Yea, so have I strive to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, lest I should build upon another man's foundation. You know, the Apostle Paul said, you know what? I may not know this, I may not know that, but if there's something I can preach, I'm going to preach Christ crucified. Now let me tell you, there's nothing wrong with studying the different types of graces in the Bible. There's nothing wrong with studying about the different types of angels in the Bible. There's nothing wrong with studying different types of topics. But today, there are a lot of preachers that are on the agenda that are worried about popularity, that are worried about politics. But as a man of God, and as one called to preach the gospel message, that man will never, ever, ever go wrong standing behind a pulpit Preaching Christ crucified. Amen. He'll never get himself in trouble. Amen. And he'll never go wrong when he lifts up the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And Christ said, If I, and if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Amen. And beloved, that's what we need more preaching of. Amen. Not hearing about politics. Not hearing about some type of agenda. We need to preach Christ crucified. Amen. Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse number 2. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Brother Ralph used to tell all of us uh, preachers. Uh, over at Tabernacle when we got called, he said, always have one in your back pocket. He said, it'd be better to have a message in your heart 
But he said, you better always have one in your back pocket because you don't know when you may just get called upon. <laughs> and he come in our one Sunday night and he said, I'm not going to preach tonight. We got three or four preacher boys here and we're going to have popcorn preaching tonight. We're going to have one stand up and preach for five minutes. He's going to sit down and then the next guy's going to get up and preach for five minutes and then he's going to sit down. And he said, I told you all to be instant, to be ready. And he said, so your number's going to get called tonight. And so I think there was four or five of us there at night and it was popcorn preaching. We popped up, we popped right back down. But the fact of the matter is, I don't know that I was fully prepared for that. And so usually you don't ever go wrong preaching out of the book of Psalms. And I found a, I was able to find a Psalm that I could relate with pretty quick. And no, it wasn't Psalm 23. And so I was able to find a Psalm I could relate with and uh, got myself through the, through the moment, amen. But you just don't know when somebody's going to ask you something or you're going to be called upon, especially if you're a man of God, to deliver the message. Amen? Amen. And so, I always need to be prepared. <clears throat> First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse number 9 tells us, For ye remember, brethren, our labor and travail, for laboring night and day, because we would not be chargeable unto any of you, we preached unto you the gospel of God. And so the apostle, the apostle Paul was saying, you know what? We're not going to be blamed for freeloading. We're not going to be blamed for loafing. We're not going to be blamed here for Easy Street. We're going to preach the gospel message. We're going to share the message of God. And beloved, that's what the world needs tonight. Amen. Uh, Beloved, I'm not against rehab programs. And in their place, they're proper and they're helpful. But if you want true peace tonight, if you want true joy tonight, if you want, if you want liberty tonight, beloved, what this world needs, it needs Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, the world offers a false peace, offers a false joy. But let me tell you something. When Christ comes into your heart and He fills that hole and that empty void in your heart and you taste those living waters and you get a hold of something that's real in your soul, let me tell you something. You can have a peace which passeth all understanding. You can enjoy this life and enjoy it more abundantly. And beloved, you can be set free from guilt, shame, and condemnation and experience a little bit of heaven while we're walking up on this earth. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. And beloved, that's what God intends for His children. Amen. But yet, tragically, tragically, so many Christians today walk around defeated and discouraged. And beloved, that's not what God intends for His people. Amen. He wants us to live a happy, peaceful, joyful, victorious life. <coughs> And by the way, but thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ has won the war for us. Yes. We still have to fight daily battles. Yes. But what has God said? We are more than conquerors Amen. through Him that loved us. Yes. And so the battles that we fight, we don't have to be on the losing end of those. No. We can be victorious in those battles. Amen. And so, Titus chapter 1, verses 1 through 3, in closing tonight, again, Paul is writing to another preacher boy. Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth which is after godliness, in hope of eternal life which God that cannot lie promise before the world began. Uh, beloved, out of all the things that God can do, the one thing God cannot do is lie. And beloved, He has promised us eternal life. And so beloved, when you get saved and truly born again, you're in like Flynn 
And the devil can't cast you out. Man can't vote you out. And God's not going to cast you out. And so, beloved, aren't you thankful tonight that you received the word with joy in your heart? Amen. You're saved. You're born again. You're sealed into the day of redemption. Why? Because God cannot lie. Amen. He cannot lie. And so, beloved, tonight, despise not prophesies. There are so many more scripture pertaining to the Word of God that I could give you tonight. Uh, but, beloved, we'd be here another two or three hours. But, beloved, the Word of God tonight, love it, live it, learn from it, look to it. Amen. Amen. Look to it. And so, we'll stop right there and we'll continue on maybe with... Uh, this thought next week in regard to prove all things. Because how do we